What's the longest you've waited for karma to kick in? True story. I got bullied for roughly 7 years straight daily when I was in secondary school. Second level education in the UK slash Ireland. Taken from the ages 11 to 18. I had kids tell me I should die. I had my ass beat. And I was emotionally destroyed by everyone who treated me like the most useless void piece of crap. I didn't feel like I should exist. I sat at home contemplating just ending it a lot. I always loved art, drawing and writing. During my adolescence I retreated to the internet. I didn't want to go to clubs where those people were, yet could still talk to people. I started posting animated flash cartoons and comics to other people who were like me for critique. Due to the bullying directed at me, I developed a rather sad sensibility towards life and an ability to quickly come back verbally at anyone who wanted to give me abuse. It was a defense mechanism for sure, but the tone shown through in the animations and comics that I drew. Through all that, I met friends and eventual co-workers. I now draw a cartoon called Cyanide and Happiness. The local papers write about me. That school held an assembly in my honor once recently. I was told this by a friend who now works there. I live overseas and Jonathan Ross comes to hang out with me at Comic Con every year, where again pictures of us appear in the local paper. My former bullies know all about this. The particularly bad ones now either avoid me in bars now, or try to be my best mate, and I walk around my hometown beaming. There was one kid in particular who would stand behind me in assembly every morning, each year, grade to Americans, was arranged into a line in the main hall, and headbutt me in the back of the head for a laugh with the others around me. The back of my head was severely bruised for months at a time, and early on it did leave me in tears with the physical pain and lack of respect for me. I'd dread every morning. I'd hear them behind me snickering and discussing whether he should do it or not. I couldn't turn around to stop them, because then I'd get yelled at by teachers for not paying attention to the front. I'd have my hand at the back of my head to protect myself. I'd hear him say come on Dave, put your hand down. You're safe. I'd eventually relent, and he'd do it anyway. They'd laugh. I'd turn around and ask him to please not do that, because my head was in so much pain from the trauma he'd dealt it before. He said okay, whilst smirking. I'd turn around, I'd hear them snickering, and he'd do it. Again. This went on for around 2 years. That kid is now a hardcore drug addict, and doing very poorly in life. Feels good man. Thank you, internet. A few years back I was the assistant manager at my karate studio. It was a slow quiet day when in walked Paul, my old bully from public school. I wasn't sure at first, it had been a long time and it was hard to tell. I didn't say anything. Paul was interested in joining the dojo and I showed him around, discussed pricing, etc. I didn't treat him any differently than I would any other potential client. At the end of the tour, Paul decided to join our dojo. We sat down in the office and he filled out the paperwork. When he wrote his name out on the application, I knew for sure that this was, indeed, my old bully. The guy who used to torment me every single weekday. Who made me kneel in dog crap. I still didn't say anything until after prepaid me for an entire year's membership. As I walked him to the door, I smiled. I'm really looking forward to training with you. I smiled. Thanks, me too, Paul said. You don't recognize me, do you? No, should I? Yes. We went to school together, grade 3 through 8. You bullied me every day and made my life miserable. Can't wait to see you in class. Paul went white and walked out without another word and never walked back in. He willingly threw away a year's membership payment, almost $500, rather than have to be in the same class with me. A high school bully humiliated me on the bus. I was the last stop on the bus, so there was always a lack of seats. I got on the bus and spotted one empty seat next to someone. I walked over and sat next to him. He turned to me and said I didn't say you could sit there. I replied there were no other seats. I guess he didn't care because he repeated his previous statement. I just ignored him. Then he shouted at the top of his lungs get the freak out ta my seat. I was taken aback. I couldn't believe he just shouted that on the bus at me, the situation felt surreal. I saw everyone on the bus start to look in my direction. I froze up. I started weighing my options. I knew I couldn't take this guy in a fight, he was freaking crazy. As you should be able to tell from this situation. 
as I'm still pondering what to do, he shouts again I said, get the freak out of my seat. Then before I can find a way out, he kicks me out of the seat. I stand up in the middle of the bus, and I'm met with roaring laughter from all the other kids on the bus. The bully stands up ready to fight, and I just walk away. Even if I was able to beat him in a one on one fight, I knew he was the type to come back the next day with five of his friends to beat you to a pulp. I walked to the back of the bus and sat in the half seat with the mentally challenged kid. I wasn't about to let things end like that though. So, I planned for my revenge. I started catching the city bus to school instead of the school bus to avoid further humiliation. Things blew over eventually and everyone forgot about that incident, but I didn't. I waited until one day, I saw that bully on the bus with a grill lighter smoking weed. Then he took the grill lighter and smacked a guy in the face with it, and he started crying. I knew this was my chance. I created an anonymous email address and sent an email to my school officials. I told them about the bully smoking weed on the bus and smacking that kid in the face with a grill lighter. I made sure not to say anything that could give my identity away. That way, no one would know who tattled. The school investigated the issue and found the evidence they needed for my witness testimonies on the bus. That bully was expelled from school and I was free to ride the bus in peace. I befriended a larger red-headed girl when I was in grade 3 or 4. She was new to the school. Everyone had their own friends and no one accepted her. I didn't have many friends, so I gladly accepted her. We became best friends. Fast forward to middle school. She was still large, but got boobs and warm acup, so she became popular. I was still a way too tall and too thin awkward girl with a lisp. Everyone made fun of me, and she joined in, so she could be cool. It got worse and worse, until she started instigating it, would circle beat me with other girls and egg my house. Fast forward again to high school. I filled out a bit, and got better friends. About halfway through grade 11 people started realizing how mean and fake she had become and turning on her. She was crying in the hall one day and I went up to her, asked if she was okay and offered my phone to her if she needed to call her mom. She transferred schools for grade 12 because she was being bullied. Funny thing is, I still feel bad for her. Bullying sucks. In 8th grade, age 13 to 14, this kid threw a wooden block at me, probably thinking, oh, let's pick on the punk girl, that'll be so hysterical. I blacked out for a good 10 to 15 seconds after it clocked me in the head. When I came to, he and his friends were all on the ground laughing at how funny this was. I ended up having to go to urgent care and not participate in gym class for a few days. His mom was on the school board and had a large role in the financial decisions of the school, so the administration was afraid to punish him and did nothing. My math teacher was this kid's football coach and made him run extra while everyone else got to take a food slash water break, but that was the only justice I got. Fast forward two years, everyone is freaking out that this guy can't play football for the JV team that year. He ended up spraining his back and breaking a few ribs from a drunken escapade into the woods the week before his sophomore year started, and the concussion that he sustained from this was severe enough that a second concussion could have caused serious mental damage. Two years isn't that long of a time, but considering there were witnesses and the kid should have been arrested and suspended at the very least, it seemed like a long time. A guy I went to high school with friended me on Facebook. He was caught stealing from my house once back then, bragging about it to mutual friends, whom he thought would not tell me. After the incident we never spoke, although we had the same circle of friends, I kept my distance, he kept his. Flash forward 20 years to now, and we were friends on Facebook. I have a pretty cool job in the music industry, good money and I travel the world. I usually add these former friends, just so they can see my life turned out pretty awesome, while most of them are in our old hometown working crap jobs anyway. He updated his status saying that he was devastated that someone stole something from his son and karma this, blah blah blah. Amongst all the posts from his friends, being sorry for him, I simply wrote something like yeah, it's really terrible when someone steals from you eh? That must really suck. Karma does have its way of evening things out though. I immediately started getting PMs from mutual friends congratulating me, who remembered the incident in school. He unfriended me after that to my extreme pleasure. 
when I was in 5th grade, there was a kid who spit on me and bullied me for about 2 months on the bus. When he moved to another bus route I thought I would never get a chance for revenge. But one day at a little league baseball game I was playing in, I saw him on the opposing team and my blood started boiling. He was the second baseman and he would laugh whenever I would go up to hit the ball. In the last inning, I was up to hit and missed the ball twice and heard him laughing from second base. That got me really mad and when the pitcher threw the ball I hit a line drive straight for the bullis face. After it hit him, he dropped and cried and the players ran over to him but no one called timeout, so I ran all the way to third base without getting out. I sat there on third with a huge smirk on my face while they picked him up and walked him to the dugout. I didn't feel bad about it all, and still don't feel bad about it. I once got punched in the pregnant stomach by my ex fiance not the father of my baby. I told him that I hope he got hit by a car. Three days later I found out that he got him hit by a truck while riding his bicycle to a friend's house. He survived but had to have extensive surgery to correct his broken bones and save his life. He was uninsured so now he's stuck with crippling hospital debt from being in ICU and having surgery. I did not have to wait very long for that one. Edit, I should note that he punched me hard enough to where I was bleeding. I had to go to the hospital. Cops were called, but they chalked it up as suspicious activity, but he now has some sort of record in the shape of a police report against him. Here's an example of where I did. From the ages of 7 to 12 I was molested by a guy in his 50s that lived with his mom. He used to hang out with my dad and pay him to cook him food. This guy was awful. I was forced on several occasions to suck his dick and at the age of 12 he tried to rape me, he could not fit it in and my parents came home so he stopped. He went to jail later that year. He stayed in prison for 5 years. He got out of jail and moved back in with his mom. He saved up to buy a house and was finally able to buy one in a nice community. Someone in his neighborhood homeowners association found out that he was on the sex offenders registry for child molestation. The HOA rallied and was able to get him evicted. He comes crawling back to my family's home and asks if he can rent the room I had just moved out of. I was visiting at the time and got to see the whole pathetic scene. He apologized for molesting me and said he only did it because he was lonely. He then proceeded to beg my father to allow him to rent my room. My father said no and kicked him out of the house. He is now homeless and spends his time going from hotel room to hotel room and homeless shelters too. I waited 10 years for this day. Oh, I also found out he was engaged. When his fiance found out about his past she dumped him in a quick second. Family karma here, when I was about 8 and my brother was 11, he got in trouble for punching a kid in the face on the school bus, my brother claims he was defending someone else I don't really remember it all that clearly, my brother paid the price, was banned from the bus for a while, faced repercussions at school, and my mom made him apologize to the kid he punched in person. A couple of months after the incident, the mother of the kid he punched decided to flip the crazy switch, and sued my parents for mental anguish claiming that her son now had crippling emotional problems stemming from the incident. She showed up at board meetings, tried to get my brother expelled, painted a picture of my family as shady and my brother as a delinquent and violent. My parents ended up escaping the legal battle with a little bit of dignity intact, but feeling ostracized in our community of 90 people. Fast forward, I'm now 27, my brother is 30. My mom sends a newspaper clipping to him in the mail, it's the indictment of the crazy mom from our childhood. Come to find out, she had been embezzling money from her employer for 5 years, totaling more than $50,000. May have taken 2 decades, but she finally got what was meant for her. Back in 1st grade, there was a notorious 2nd grade bully that all the 1st graders feared. I was due to transfer to another school, so on my last day I pretty much did whatever. But then I got an idea, I was gonna beat up the second grade bully. I needed a reason, so during recess he and two friends were talking shit to anyone who walked by him. I walked by numerous times and nothing. But then he did, and that was all I needed. I brutalized that bitch, had him against a wall, wham, face shot, then he'd cover his face, wham, body shot, then he'd lower his hands, then face again. It was like a game of rock paper scissors, and he lost every time. 
Then he just gave up and fell over. At that point I dragged him to a teacher and tossed him at her feet and just said, here you go. My name was sung by all first graders that day, for the tyranny had been lifted. I was at a new school the next day. Like and subscribe for more edit videos.